I am Tasmia. Today we'll be talking to Yan Likun, a personality in AI that needs no introduction. In the following conversation, we'll explore Yan's latest research and his views on the current trends in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Brands of uh, of machine learning based AI, there is very little planning most of the time, except in certain types of AI systems uh, for games, like you know playing. Uh, uh, you know, playing Go or something like that, or chess, where you, you need to plan ahead. But also the the latest uh, system from 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 my colleagues at Meta, Cicero, they can play diplomacy. So there is quite a bit of planning there as well. Uh, but it's not hierarchical planning. So uh, and and we we do this all the time. We don't realize it. But like you know, if if I want to go from uh, uh, New York to Delhi, um, I know that the first step I have to do is uh, go to the airport so I can catch a plane. Okay, so I've decomposed the overall task, going to Delhi, into going to the airport, catching a plane, right? And then uh, to go to the airport, I need to uh, get out of my house, uh, catch a taxi. To get out of my house, I need to, you know, walk down the stairs to the door, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you can decompose this task all the way down to millisecond by millisecond muscle control. And being able to do planning requires having uh, the ability to predict what is going to happen as a consequence of your actions, whether your actions are low-level muscle controls or whether your action is going to the airport, right? Um, so I can tell that, you know, if I plan to go to the airport right now, I'll be at the airport within an hour or something like that. But I can't predict all the details. So... Um, so learning how the world works, particularly learning how the world can be affected by actions you take, uh, is an essential component of intelligence. So that's what allows us to reason and plan, essentially. No, I think there is a lot of people who are focusing on this, you know, not necessarily with the methods that, um, you know, I think are the most promising, but that's, that's okay. Like, nobody has the complete answer, so you need a diversity of, uh, of uh, approaches. Uh, but but I think a lot of people are really interested in uh, you know pushing self supervised learning and there is very short term motivations for that um, because there is a lot of problems that you want to use machine learning for uh, for which you don't have much label data collecting label data is very expensive uh, sometimes it's practically impossible and but yet you know you you'd like to have systems that work relatively well with a small amount of uh, label data. So there is a huge push, you know, just from the pure pragmatic view of short-term applications to uh, uh, deploy more powerful self-supervised learning, learning methods. So, for example, uh, you'd like a vision system to basically have a good way of representing images in such a way that if, if it comes time to train it to recognize a particular set of objects, you wouldn't have to collect thousands of examples of those objects. You would just have to you know, show it just a few examples, right? And and the system will understand the concept, right? So kind of like a little child, right? You, you show a, a picture of an elephant to a little child and you don't need to show thousands of examples, right? Um, so that's the that's one purpose. That would allow machine learning system to handle the long tail of, uh, of things that, you know, for which you just cannot collect lots of data. In certain areas, it's really critical, like in medical imaging, there are certain types of... Uh, uh, you know, diseases or whatever for which you, you actually have very little data or for various reasons, because it's difficult to get, because it's expensive to label, because there's privacy issue, you know, all kinds of reasons, right? So, so in the medical field, uh, it's, very, it's very often the case that you don't, just don't have much data. And then there is things like uh, in, in natural language understanding, so in uh, translation. So let's take translation. Uh, the, all the good translation systems now are, are multilingual. So they, they can, uh, with a single neural net, essentially, um, encode um, uh, text in any language, any of a couple hundred languages, right? Extract a representation in the form of a long list of numbers, basically, of the, of the, the meaning of the, of the text. And then uh, translate that text into another language, any of a couple hundred. Now, this would not be possible without self-supervised pre-training. I've known Jorgen since, since he was a student. Um, he, you know, he, he has a, I would say, uh, 
an unusual idea about uh, how credit should be attributed. Um, so, and and that you know, not not many people in the domain kind of follows him uh, on that. So, it seems like he has the idea that if if someone has, you know, the germ of an idea, mm -hmm. then uh, that person should get all the credit for what comes after. And for most people, that's just not how how things work, right? Coming, I mean, you know, there is. Uh, I mean, there's quite a lot of people working on large language models with sort of different, uh, slightly different uh, approaches. Uh, I think what uh, characterizes, uh, and, and, you know, uh, like three or four companies, right, can produce things that are similar to GPT-X. So, you know, if, you know, within two or three months of, uh, of, of each other. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so it's not like... Uh, you know, any company there is significantly ahead of any other in that respect. One thing, though, that OpenAI has been able to do is uh, uh, deploy those systems in such a way that they can get a, a sort of uh, data flywheel so that the more users they have, the, the, more, the more implicit feedback they get on the system and the more they can, they can adjust it to uh, produce better outputs. Um, now... There's, there's, there's precious little practical applications of GPT-X at the moment. Uh, it's entertaining, that's for sure. It's, uh, you know, interesting to play with them. Uh, but, like, is it actually useful? Like, can you use any of this for, I don't know, medical diagnosis? No, absolutely not. Um, you know, can you use it to uh, generate essays for students? Yeah, maybe. Like, can you use it as a as a writing assistant, um, as a journalist, I'm sure you, <laughs> you would be interested in that. Um, yeah, probably. I mean, you have to, you know, go back on it afterwards and correct the factual mistakes because there's going to be factual mistakes. But that might be useful. It's certainly very useful for writing code, right? So uh, things like uh, Copilot and, 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 and things like that, where, you know, you, you start writing a, a function and the system basically, you know, fills it in. Um, so you know we we have a prototype system at at uh, at Fair that you you might have heard of called Galactica that uh, does this for scientific publication, right? So you 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 can start writing a paragraph for a scientific paper and it kind of you know automatically generates uh, 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 the the proper command for a table of results and and you know references to the state of the art and and things like that, right? Um, so, uh, so I, I, there is some use for 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 some of this technology, and a lot of people have putting a lot of hope that there would be a lot of you know a lot of use. But as I said before, I do not think those systems in their current form can be fixed to uh, be kind of intelligent in in ways that we expect systems to be intelligent, right? So the dialogue systems are entertaining; they're not very useful. To make them useful, you have to make them solve real problems for people. Like, you know, help them in their daily lives, like if, uh, if it were like a virtual assistant or something. And that is still completely out of reach.